Spring 1997, spring going towards the summertime. Hypnotized just came out. Biggie recently just got killed. A lot of hit records on the radio. Bad Boy was the talk of the town. Everybody wanted to hire the hitmen for production. And we, we just had it popping at that time. Chris Lighty came and gave us a visit at Daddy's House Recording Studio and brought LL Cool J along with him. He had sparked interest in having uh, the hitman um, executive produce LL Cool J's album. Preferably it was D-Dot and Nasheen that he was looking for. So he came down to Daddy's house and um, had a big conversation, brought LL in, played a whole, lot, played a whole bunch of tracks. I happened to be in that, se that particular session because it was going to be a collective hitman thing with D-Dot and Nasheem spearheading the project. And uh, LL came in, listened to the tracks and stuff, and um, I just remember clear as day how, how excited he was just to work on this project. We played him a whole lot of joints, and you know, he left pretty excited, he, he was happy. So um, after that meeting, um, Puff got a wind of it. He sat with Chris Lighty, make a long story short. Um, they talked and then uh, Puff took over the project and he ended up becoming the executive producer of the album. So Puff turned around and then he hired me to produce the songs for L. And uh, they scheduled the meeting over at Daddy's house. No, actually they scheduled the session at the, the, the Hit Factory, the brand new Hit Factory. State of the art, probably the most expensive uh, studio in Manhattan at that time. I think, it was on, I think it was on 54th Street, if I'm not mistaken. So we went over there. First, actually, I sat in the studio and created a DAT of all, all the joints that I thought would be good for L. You know, Puff told me to make a dat, a special dat for LL Cool J. So it was like about a good 10 joints. Same day we went over to, to the hit factory and I met LL. And um, I remember when LL came in the studio, you know, around that time Puff used to, um, Puff used to have a barber shop in daddy's house where he would get, you know, he would cut his hair and get manicured and everything else. But that particular time, um, it took him out of his element because we were at, at the hip factory. So he brought his entourage over there so he could get his hair cut and, and get his, his pedicure and manicure and everything else. And um, I remember L walking in the studio and L was like, yo, what the hell is this? Getting jiggy in L session? You know, it kind of threw L hello off. L was like, yo. So, you know, I walked up to L and I was like, yo, L, you remember me? And uh, he looked at me, he was like, nah. So you know, I started going back and started to remember. I knew LL when LL was like 14 years old. You know, I grew up in East Elmhurst, Queens, and L used to frequent East Elmhurst back then. I'm not sure if he had a family member or, or, uh, or you know, good friend. I don't, I don't remember, I just know he used to be around in that area. After we finished talking about that, L was like, yo, give me 50 foot chips. And I looked at him, so I was like, all right, cool, because I was doing my little exercising thing at the time. So I got down, I started doing my push-ups. I did like maybe like, by the time I got to like 35, I was struggling. I was just like, Ugh. got to 40, I was done. And he was challenging everybody else. Then L gets on the floor and he knocks out his push-ups. Bam, 50, he was good, all, you know, big and cock and shit. So, L, you know, he's going around challenging everybody and whatnot. So then we walked into the, we walked into the, uh, the control room. It was the big room, the big A room. We had the big, uh, S I think it either was the SSL or the Neve board. We walked up in there and um, had all the equipment laid out and everything. Had the MPC 3000, had the, uh, like a, the Triton keyboard and, and a, um, I think I may have the ASR 10 at the time, uh, ASR 10 module. So we had to, um, the engineer and I, we would have to track the, the song out, you know, onto the board. So 
Puff said, pull out the debt and play the songs for L. So I pulled out the debt, gave it to the engineer, started playing the songs. So the engineer, uh, you know, he would skip the songs when you say next. And um, so it was about a good 10 songs on that track, you know? So I think the first one he may have skipped. But when he heard the second song, I was like, yo, I want that, you know? And it happened to be the Phenomenon track. So when he heard it, um, they asked me, they said, you, got, you, you got the disc to that? Because back then we were, we, we weren't dealing with any, um, we weren't dealing with hard jobs. We were dealing with floppy disks back then. Everything was put on floppy disks. So, and I was saying to myself, I know I don't have that disc to that particular song. But if I don't have the disc, then I'm going to have to figure some shit out. So they go through the, they go through the debt and they're picking more songs. Picked about four joints. So now L's ready to like, you know, get busy. So um, he's like, well, how is it gonna take you to track that song? And I was like, give me about two hours. I think I can knock it out. So it's gonna take, it's probably gonna take at least an hour and a half just to track the song. And and I and I'm thinking to myself, I would have to recreate the track because I don't have the I don't have the disc on me. And the reason I gotta recreate it is because I would have to leave the studio and go home. And get the disc. And now, mind you, it's rush hour. There's no way in the world I'm gonna make it in time. So, I'm like, okay. Everybody broke out. I'm in the studio by myself, and I'm trying to figure out how in the world am I going to recreate this song in an hour and a half, and then I gotta track the song on top of it. I said, this is no way. I get on the phone and I start calling all the record, all the record stores, and trying to figure out who got this CD. So uh, Virgin Superstore was not too far. They didn't have it. There was a Tower Records up on like, I think it was 83rd Street. They didn't have it. And I'm like, dang, I gotta go. So I, then I called four from the one down of, um, in Broadway. I think it was down on 4th Street or 3rd Street, something like that. So they happen to have it. And, but it's way down in um, the village. And you're talking rush hour. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna make this shit in time. So then I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna have to just go ahead and do it. They just gonna have to be mad at me. So I call a cab. I, I go outside and I hail a cab. I jump in the cab and then I head down to, uh, I head down to Broadway. So I'm looking at my watch. I'm like sweating like, oh shoot, this is, this is crazy. So I get up in there. I look for the CD. I grab it. I leave out. Try to hail a cab, having problems catching the cab. So this one cab passes right by me and goes to pick up this lady. So then I run over to, to the cab and I get into the car before the lady gets in. And I sit in the cab. And then he's like, he looks at me and I was like, yo, I need to go to like 54th Street. He's like, I'm not going that way. I said, I ain't getting out the cab until you take me. Right, so we're sitting in there for like about a half hour, you no, know, not half, hour, like about 15 minutes arguing. And then he finally lets up. So, okay, all right, cool. Because he sees that I'm not getting out the car. So then we head up back north. I mean, yeah, we head back north up to 54th Street. And um, it's crazy because it's rush hour. And it's like, yo, dude, yo, you got, you got to put the pedal to the metal. You got to move quicker than that, man. So then by the time I get there, an hour and a half is gone. It's like two hours. So then I walk into the hip factory. I walk in there slowly. And as I walk in, I see Chris Lighty looking at me. I see Puffy looking at me. I see Ella Cool J looking at me. And they're giving me a stare like, like, you done fucked up, nigga. And then I sit down by the drum machine. And then L just starts going crazy. He's like, yo, nigga, what the fuck you doing, man? You wasting all my fucking money. You got all this fucking outboard gear. You got this and that. And, you know, we on the clock. And you just bullshit. And like, you, dude, you wasting my budget, part of my budget doing this bullshit. And I just put my head down on a drum machine. And I'm like, just like silent. And I, and 
I'm just hearing him talking and and all of a sudden I'm tuning him out while he's just screaming and just just going like crazy and shit. So I I, th- I finished letting him vent. <laughs> so so I say, yo, I don't have the disc on me, man. I gotta recreate the song. Right? And there's no way in the world I was gonna be able to pull this off unless I went down to that record store down on the floor from Broadway to do this shit. So, but I know Puff. Puff is like, whatever you gotta do, you make sure you get that shit done. I don't, he's like, he don't give a fuck. That's, Puff always told me that. He's like, yo. But he always told me, make sure I always have my disc, because if you miss up on that opportunity, you're done. So L was like, yo, I don't give a fuck. Next time we do this shit, you bring an umbrella, a turntable, a hammer, I don't care what it is, you gotta make sure that you get that shit done on the drop of a dime. But you know, I'm glad that happened because the record the record ended up coming out better than, than the first the first version that I had. So um once the record was once the track was finished, L came back and then he started writing his rhymes with the quickness. He knocked that shit out with the quickness real quick. We went up in there and then you know he knocked out his both his uh his sixteens. The record was good money at that point. We took it to Daddy's house. From Daddy's house, um, we got DJ Scratch to come in to do the scratches. And a week or two later, I had a meeting with Puff, and he was like, yo, guess what? I'm like, what? He said, yo, you got the first single. Phenomenon. Rest is history. 